Welcome back to Biomechanics. Today we will discuss the structure and mechanics of arteries. We will start with the gross anatomy of the systemic and pulmonary circulations and then examine the microscopic structure of the vessel walls. Next we summarize the mechanical properties of arteries and methods for testing them. Residual stress and strain are important concepts in biomechanics that have best been studied in arteries. And finally, we give an example of how disease is associated with blood vessel remodeling. Here we see the tree structure of the systemic arterial system in a dog. As we proceed along the arterial tree, the diameter of the aorta decreases, but this is due less to a gradual taper than to a reduction in diameter after each branch point in the tree. As we proceed to daughter branches, the arterial diameter decreases, but the total number of arteries in parallel increases at a greater rate, so that the total cross-sectional area of the arterial network increases with each division until the capillaries are reached. This also means that the average flow velocity decreases from the largest arteries to the smaller branching vessels and arterioles. Large and small arteries and arterioles have three layers. The intima, which is a single layer of endothelial cells on a basement membrane. The media, which has smooth muscle cells. And the adventitia, which includes connective tissue, nerves, and smaller vessels called the vasa vasorum. The largest arteries, like the aorta, are called elastic arteries. Their media contain elastic laminae, seen here, with gaps or fenestrations while the smaller muscular arteries, such as the resistance vessels, which have the greatest pressure drop during the circulation, have a greater fraction of the wall thickness occupied by smooth muscle and a smaller fraction of elastic tissue. The basic functional unit of artery walls is referred to as the musculoelastic fascicle. This is the longitudinal direction of the vessel, and this is the circumferential direction of the vessel. E here refers to elastin, and CE refers to the smooth muscle cells. In addition, these black structures here are collagen bundles between the elastin sheets. Here we see on the right a photograph of the pulmonary artery of a rabbit showing the vasa vasorum in the adventitial layer of the wall, which has been cleared so that the network of small vessels in the blood vessel wall itself can be seen. This table shows the collagen, elastin, and water contents of various arteries. It shows that the ascending aorta has the greatest fraction of elastin measured by dry weight, whereas the carotid and coronary arteries have the greatest fractions of collagen measured by dry weight. All of them have about two-thirds water by wet weight, but the fraction is somewhat lower in the coronary arteries which also have the highest ratio of collagen to elastin. Here we see nonlinear stress strain curves, hysteresis and preconditioning behavior in a cow coronary artery subjected to uniaxial circumferential loading. The stresses here are in kilopascals. And note that, especially after the tissue has been preconditioned, the stiffness is very low until the strain reaches about 20 or 25 percent. Blood vessels are nonlinear, and plotting the circumferential tangent modulus versus the circumferential stress for various sections of the dog aorta, we see that a linear fit, i.e. an exponential stress-strain relation, is not a particularly good approximation for any of the samples, especially here in the aortic arch closest to the heart. Moving away from the aortic arch, where the elastin content is highest, to the distal thoracic aorta, the linear approximation gets a little bit better, but is still not a good approximation at low stresses. Hence, while arteries like other soft tissues are nonlinear, unlike many other soft tissues, an exponential stress strain relation is not such a perfect approximation. Stress relaxation is seen in arteries like this sample of bovine coronary artery. Note that the instantaneous stress here is about 225 kilopascals compared with an asymptotic stress of about 150 kilopascals after about 30 minutes exposure to constant strain. Artery walls are non-homogeneous, anelastic, and anisotropic. 
The stress-strain relationship is non-linear, and the mechanical properties depend on vessel type, location, condition, and environment. Moreover, the vessels may be branched, curved, and sometimes even tapered. However, some common simplifying assumptions in the analysis of arterial mechanics include the assumption that the wall is homogeneous, pseudoelastic, and incompressible. Occasionally, the wall is considered non-homogeneous with two separate layers. Normally, the intima is ignored. The shape of the vessels is assumed to be a thick-walled cylindrical tube. Some testing approaches for blood vessel mechanics include uniaxial testing of a vessel strip stretched in one direction, biaxial testing of a longitudinally opened vessel that is stretched in the longitudinal and circumferential direction simultaneously, simultaneous inflation stretch and twist of an intact cylindrical vessel, or bending of vessel wall strips. This motorized experimental apparatus can simultaneously inflate, stretch, and twist an artery while measuring strains with the video camera, torque with the torque transducer, axial load with a transducer not shown, although the linear motor for applying the axial stretch is seen, and pressure with a pressure transducer. The vessel sample is tied onto cannulas or tubes at each end that connect the vessel to a pressure source and the pressure transducer. This three-point bending apparatus was designed by YC Fung to test small strips of artery wall. The bending moments are calculated from the force in the middle wire, which is calibrated from its deflection measured from above by a stereo microscope that also records the bending of the sample in the bar as the other two ends of the three-point bending system are displaced with a micromanipulator. Until now, we have assumed that when there is no external load on our sample, there is no stress. But that is not necessarily the case, especially for a sample that is cylindrical, or what is said to be multiply connected. The presence of pre-stress or residual stress in the unloaded vessel segment on the left can be seen when a radial cut is made and the vessel immediately springs open. The angle that the vessel opens up to, about 90 degrees in this example, is called the opening angle and is a measure of the residual strain. You can think of the residual stress in the unloaded sample as the bending stress required to close this ring back up. Because bending causes compression on the inside and tension on the outside, they average out so that the intact ring can be in equilibrium with zero external loads, even though it is not stress-free. The opening angle, and hence the residual stress and strain, vary markedly along the length of the rat aorta, from almost 180 degrees by the heart to less than zero at the middle of the aorta, which means that the vessel actually doubles over itself when it's cut and then back up to about 90 degrees at the distal end of the aorta at the iliac bifurcation. Arteries grow and remodel when the blood pressure increases. In the lung, this can be achieved quickly by subjecting the animal to low oxygen or hypoxia. Note that after the pulmonary artery pressure rises, the arterial wall starts to thicken within 12 hours, and this continues over the next week or two. In summary, blood vessels form arterial and venous networks in the systemic and pulmonary circulations. The vessel walls have an intima, media, and adventitia. They have a composite tissue structure that affects vessel properties. Vessels are nonlinear, anisotropic, viscoelastic, and exhibit preconditioning behavior. Biaxial testing is used to measure anisotropic properties, or sometimes even triaxial testing. Blood vessels have residual stress in the no-load state, and blood vessel structure mechanics and residual stress can all change or remodel with long-term changes in blood pressure.